Hello and welcome to our guinea fowl color genetics series. My name is Jessica Farmer Lee and I want to start with giving a bit of a background. My husband Joshua and I have been raising and breeding guinea fowl since 2016. We specialize in the breeding of a variety of different colors of guinea fowl. During these past eight years, I have done lots of extensive research, both on my own personal breeding side of things, as well as watching videos, reading articles, and discussing with other breeders. If you're looking for a good source on guinea fowl, including the genetics behind them, be sure to check out Dana Manchester, who runs a numidary project by Shady Hollow Farm. He has a YouTube page and a Facebook group called Guinea Fowl VGS where you can find lots of genetic information including the fine details that won't be discussed in these videos. I myself have raised and bred over 30 distinct varieties of guinea fowl, ranging from the most common of pearls to the rarest of copper. I am very happy to share my knowledge and help educate others on the genetics of guinea fowl. I want to start by saying that I will be using very basic layman terms. I do not claim to be an expert geneticist or a genetic scientist. It might not use the most specific scientific terms, but the terms I use are very basic to help others learn the quickest. Without further ado, let's begin. We will start with some basic terminology. The first term we will talk about is a locus or the plural form of loci. A locus is a fixed position where that gene or genetic marker is actually located on the DNA strand. Examples in guinea fowl of this include the purling, attenuate, lavender, dun, and white locus. The next term we will discuss is allele. Alleles are one of two or more alternate forms of a gene. These are found at the locus and there's going to be two alleles per locus. An example of an allele on the attenuate locus is there are two forms, the wild dominant allele and the attenuate recessive allele. And to clarify, each bird can only have two alleles at any given locus. Phenotype is going to be the observable character that we see with our own eyes, which is the color. So an example of a phenotype would be the names of the varieties, including pearl, royal purple, slate, and violet. The genotype, though, refers to the genetic makeup that actually creates the color we see. It will be a combination of all the locusts and alleles that bird has that creates the color we see. Knowing the parentage of a bird and the colors that the parents were can help you determine what the genotype of that bird is. It is normally displayed as a number of letters in a row, which we will go into more detail shortly. The majority of alleles can be considered either a dominant or recessive. A dominant allele is one that only needs one allele to be displayed phenotypically. However, recessives require that both alleles on a locus be the same allele to be displayed phenotypically. So an example of this is fully pearled is considered to be dominant over the recessive semi-pearled allele which needs two copies to be displayed. This brings us to our next two terms, homozygous and heterozygous. Homozygous refers when the two alleles on a locus are the same genetic mutation. Heterozygous refers to when there are two different alleles at the locus of two separate mutations. Genotype is typically represented by a strand of letters, each pair representing a different locus. It is important to note that the letters that we use in the genotype of guinea fowl, as well as the understanding of the genetics of guinea fowl colors, is a constantly evolving idea as more research is done by researchers. For the purpose of my videos and the examples of genotypes I will use, I will use an underscore when the second allele is unknown. Even though this is not considered common practice when talking about the genotypes of guinea fowl, I do find it helpful to use when learning and talking about the genetics of guinea fowl. To find out what the second allele a bird carries, you can do test breedings with specific colors. Below is an example of a genotype written out for a colored pearl guinea fowl. The next two slides show the different locus and alleles of guinea fowl. As mentioned before, these letters and the meaning behind them are subject to change as more research is done by researchers. This is especially true for the white locus where more intensive research is needed to cover the different types of alleles. You can pause if you want to read. I will go in depth about these and show example of all of these color combinations in our future videos. And remember, the recessive alleles will be shown with a lowercase letter, while the dominant alleles will be shown with a capitalized letter. An important part of understanding color genetic inheritance 
is understanding how to use Punnett squares. So we will do an example of breeding a homozygous coral blue to a homozygous chocolate. Shown on the screen is the genotype of those two colors. In the bottom right, you see an empty Punnett square. It doesn't matter if you put the cock or the hen on the top or the side, but you will take the two alleles and place the hens on top and the cocks on the side or vice versa. You will have a separate square for each locus. You will then look at these results that we see on this next slide here and see what the resulting genotypes of the offspring will be. Pause if you want to review. In this specific case, all of the offspring have the same genotype and they will all be phenotypically royal purple. These royal purples are now split as in they are carriers of the dark dun and the lavender genetics. This means if we bred these royal purple offspring back to each other, we would now get royal purples, coral blues, chocolates, and even light coral. This kind of strategy is very helpful for developing colors that you might not be able to buy. Our last topic will cover probably the more complex genetics of guinea fowl and one of the rarest. In guinea fowl, there is only one sex link variety. This is known as the sex link bronze. When paired with the right genetics, there are four named varieties. The fully pearled version is called a chocolate pearl. This is very common over in Australia. The semi-pearled non-attenuate version is called bronze. The attenuate fully pearled version is called brass. And the semi-pearled attenuate version is called copper. With it being sex-linked, it means it's inherited and connected to the sex chromosome. Unlike in mammals, the hens are actually the XY animals and are the ones who determine the sex of the offspring. So they have an XY chromosome, while cocks have an XX chromosome. I represent this by XB being the bronze sex link genetic. In cocks, they must be homozygous XB, while hens must have an XB on their X chromosome. So that means hens cannot be carriers. They either are sex link bronze or they aren't. And cocks can be carriers, though, if they are heterozygous XB. Again, cedar wing is a similar but different genetic component. It is more of a modifier. Think of it as a dial that you can scale up or down. If anyone here is familiar with rabbit genetics, cedar wing is very similar to rufus in how it acts and how it controls and is displayed on the animal. When it is scaled up, it enhances the natural color, but also brings out a very rusty color throughout the entire body of the bird, but especially on the wings. Cedar wing is often paired with sex link bronze to create very beautiful birds. That wraps up our introduction. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, be sure to check out part one, which is already posted, where we cover the wild group of varieties, including pearl, or a purple, slate, and violet. Until next time, on the farm.